Welcome to episode 83 of the Wooly Thistle podcast, formerly known as New Hampshire Knits. Today is Friday, September 7th, 2018, and I'm your host, Corrine Clare. This episode is sponsored by thewoollythistle.com. The Wooly Thistle brings the best of British and European yarns to us here in the United States and Canada. The Wooly Thistle will be vending at the Art Fair at Squam in New Hampshire on Saturday, September 15th from 7 to 10. If you're in the area, I hope you can make it. I'm very excited to be attending again. And I'll be bringing lots of yarn, including Blacker, Tuku, Jameson and Smith, and John Arban Knit by Numbers and lots more. I have yet to decide what will make the final cut. But I'm very excited and hope to meet you if you're going. Let the Wooly Thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thanks to new and returning listeners. It's great to have you here. This is a jam-packed episode and as you can already tell, there are some changes afoot. So let me get into it. My podcast, New Hampshire Knits, is celebrating its four-year anniversary in September. This little podcast has brought many fantastic people into my life and without it, the Wooly Thistle would not be in business. Over the last year, I've been deciding whether to continue podcasting and the answer is a resounding yes. However, the podcast will change its name to the Wooly Thistle Podcast. It only makes sense to bring the podcast in under the Wooly Thistle's umbrella, which helps me streamline my workflow. I should mention that in the same vein, the New Hampshire Knits Ravelry Group will now direct folks to the Woolly Thistles Ravelry Group. So if you're a member over on New Hampshire Knits, please go over to the Woolly Thistles Group and join there. I know many of you have and our numbers are growing quickly. So thank you if you've already done that. I really appreciate your help with this. And so just be sure to join the Woolly Thistles Ravelry Group so you can keep up to date with the latest podcast and shop news. And of course, that is where the Woolly Thistles Sweater Cal is being hosted too. The podcast will continue in audio and we'll still have the familiar segments, including on and off the needles, lots of knitting blether and occasional visits to the chicken coop for the popular coop cast. And of course, there will be shop news. You can listen to the Wooly Thistle on iTunes and YouTube, or you can stream it on the shop website at thewoollythistle.com. There was some problems with iTunes when I changed everything over, but I think they've sorted themselves out and everything should be all set. You don't need to change anything. The Wooly Thistle podcast will just show up instead of New Hampshire Knits now. I hope you'll continue to join me here at the Wooly Thistle podcast. The name change has already happened. And as I said, the feed has changed automatically and you shouldn't need to resubscribe or do anything to continue receiving new episodes. New Hampshire Knits will now show up in your feed as the Wooly Thistle. And I guess if you're hearing this, you've already worked that out. So well done. So let's get started, shall we? This episode includes Off the Needles, On the Needles, the Wooly Thistle Sweater Cal 2018, news about a newsletter, which I call my blether letter, Blacker's 13th birthday yarn tour, lots of news about that, the Vintage Shetland Project update, Wildwood by Marie Wallen, that's an announcement I have for you, and then we'll have the Wooly Thistle update and a coop cast, and then we'll wrap it up. So there's lots and lots to talk about, so I'm going to dive right in. Off the Needles, Radari by Vedis John's Daughter. I knitted this for Jay. I started it way back in the beginning of the year. His birthday's in February and he got a sleeve for his birthday. But since then, I knitted up the other sleeve and the body. And I screwed up all the color work on the cuffs of the sleeves because my printout of the pattern cut off the bottom color work section and I didn't even know it. Um, So I have to decide whether I'm going to correct that or just leave it as a design feature. And I'm leaning towards the design feature side of things because he doesn't even notice. (laughs) And then it just got put aside while I got on and knitted other things. 
But then as we were getting ready for the woolly thistle cal, I'd already done my swatch for what I was planning to knit for the cal. And all I had left to do was join the sleeves and the body in the radari and then do the color work yoke. And I thought, you know what, if I work really hard, I can get that done before I have to cast on for the cal. And so that's what I did because I was afraid if I didn't do that, then it would languish more as the weather turns. And I was definitely spurred on by his constantly asking, is that my sweater you're knitting? When clearly it was not. <laughs> so he wants this sweater, which is really nice. Um, I enjoyed teasing him a little bit with it. So he has tried it on. I haven't blocked it yet, but I have sewn in all the ends. And of course, this is knitted in Letlopi. And there's so many different variations of color work that you can do. But I did the main body in um, 0058, which is a lovely darker gray. And then I used 0054, which is the ash gray, a very light gray. And I think 0086, which is a nice oatmeal color and a medium gray 0056. So those were the colors I used. I really like how it came out. Jay is not a um, big flash colorful guy. So I think this is a nice subtle but well contrasted yoke. I tried it on when I finished it and it's huge on me but very comfy. So yeah, I can see that happening. But Jay tried it on and he did complain that the neck in the front felt a little bit high so hopefully I can block that out a wee bit for him but otherwise it fitted him really well and it looks very nice on him. I haven't blocked it like I said and I haven't taken any pictures of it yet except my obligatory bathroom shot of me wearing it. <laughs> yeah so I need to get that up on Ravelry as being finished and photographed. So that's what's off the needles. On the needles I have the whole body now knitted for the Calyx sweater by Elizabeth Doherty. And that was in time out for a little while. Oh yes, I explained all that. It was all to do with Gage and losing my pattern and then finding it again. That was great. So I got the body finished and it's got a lovely, interesting little construction around the shoulders. That's all done. However, it ended up in time out again because I put one of the pieces on back to front which I didn't realize till I went to join the sleeves. So I had to take that off and put it back on the right way around. And then you have to block the sweater before picking up stitches for the sleeves because there's a lot of seams around the shoulder area. So that is actually waiting to be blocked. So I think I'll be having a wee blocking party with the Radari and the Calyx. But this is knitted in DK White Blacker Lioness, which is a 50-50 wool and linen blend. And I love it. Really love knitting with it. And um, the pattern is coming out really nicely in it. So I'm looking forward to getting those sleeves done. Of course, I might not wear it until the spring because it's taking me this long, but I'm going to enjoy wearing it when I do get the chance. So that needs to be finished, but that probably really is on hold until I finish my sweater cal knit, which is Rosamund by Marie Wallen from Bloomsbury. This is her current book, which has eight or nine designs specifically written for Rowan Felted Tweed, which is a DK white. I have all the colors that you need in stock. So if you've bought the book and you're wanting to knit out of it, get your yarn from the woolly thistle. The Rosamond sweater is an oversized ribbed sweater, completely ribbed front, back, arms. And then there's these nice big cables in the ribbing uh, front and back and down the sleeve. So I've knitted one sleeve. This is also a new experience in that it's knitted flat and in pieces. And I've always knitted things in the round. So this is the first time doing that. And uh, I've knitted one sleeve and I'm halfway up the second sleeve. So it's going well. Since being a continental knitter, ribbing really does not slow me down at all. I quite enjoy it. Whereas if I was a right-handed knitter still, I think this would be a very laborious knit. So I'm enjoying that and it's moving right along. The cables were, um, I had to think about for quite a while until I got the hang of what I was doing and now I have them memorized which is nice. Yeah and I'm enjoying it. I'm knitting it in the avocado color which is the color pictured in the Bloomsbury book. I know a couple of you are also knitting the Rosamund in avocado so I need to get more of that color in stock but everything else is in stock. One of the prettiest colors that's new to the shop is clay and it's a very very light gray. 
very delicate gray and it's got little flecks of tweedy blue and and different colors in it so that's really nice and that would look great in this sweater too also on the needles is a pair of socks that I'm self-designing for Jay. These are ribbed socks. I seem to be in a ribbing thing right now. And I'm knitting this with Rama Strick Garn, which is uh, Rama's DK wool yarn. And I've heard that this yarn makes very good sock yarn. So I wanted to have a wee test of that. And my God, <laughs> does DK weight socks knit up fast? Yes, yes, they do. In fact, I had to stop and have Jay try the sock on because I'd shot past where his toe decreases needed to be. So I'm knitting them top down and I've, I've done two by two ribbing and then I have partridge heel and those little pearl bumps are popping. So there's lots of lovely stitch definition in this yarn. And uh, I've gone down the foot and I just need to do the toe decreases. And one 50 gram ball knits uh, one man size sock. I've got a little bit left over, but I do still have the toe to knit. So 100 grams should definitely fit your man's feet. And yeah, I mean, I think these are going to make great winter socks for when you're shoving your feet in boots and things like that. So... I could see more of them in my future. And also the DK weight, I think, makes really nice mittens, especially color work mittens. So the navy blue and the cream or navy blue and light gray, that quintessential Scandinavian color work knitting in mittens will happen really quickly in DK weight. So there's plenty of that in stock. I've also got the color cards for the strict garn and the finnel garn. So, and I'm always adding more colors to the finnel garn and I'm starting to increase the colors available in the strict garn. If you want a color that I don't have in stock, just send me an email and I will order it in for you and add it to the shop. No problem at all. Okay, so that's all that's on the needles right now. I'm enjoying my knitting as always. It's been super hot here lately and the knitting has been a little on the sweaty side, but knitters are going to knit, right? The last thing about those socks is they're bright red. Go red socks. Okay, the Wooly Thistle Sweater Cal. Wow, what a great start to the cal we had. Thanks to everyone who's participating. We had lots of great pre-cal chatter in the Ravelry group thread and we kicked off cast on day with two cast on prizes and the winners have been contacted and their prizes are on their way if they don't have them already. And they won a Wooly Thistle zippered pouch bag, which has not been on general release at all. It's a lovely sock size zippered pouch with the woolly thistle colours and logo on the front. And they got some lovely goodies inside, which I'll keep secret for now because maybe I'll send out more prizes as we go. But keep chatting and knitting along. There are so many great projects on the grow and as is our usual way at New Hampshire Knits and the Woolly Thistle, everyone is helping each other and encouraging each other in the thread. Uh, we have some brand new sweater knitters as well as seasoned veterans. So I just love this group and how helpful everyone is. And just thank you so much for being the wonderful knitters that you are. And there'll be more prizes to follow for Chatty Cathy's. <laughs> so keep chatting, keep knitting. This cal is also the beneficiary of some very generous and excellent designers offering their patterns as prizes for the end of the cal. Uh, some designers also provided pattern discounts leading up to the cal, which was great. Thank you so much to these designers and in no particular order they are by Annie Clare, who is actually going to be in line six or line a six. Her cardigan is the cover picture of the new magazine. So congratulations, Annie. That's wonderful news. We have Marie Wallen, who is offering her Bloomsbury book, an actual physical copy to a winner. Gudrun Johnson is offering a pattern prize from her Ravelry store. Pinigori, lovely Anne, is offering three cardigan patterns for three winners. That's one each. Uh, Through the Loops is Kristen Kapoor and three winners will receive her September house sweater pattern. Blue Bee Studio is Elizabeth Doherty and she's giving away a hard copy of her book, Top Down Reimaging Set in Sleeves Design, and two self published patterns from her Ravelry store. Truly Myrtle, lovely Libby Johnson, is offering three patterns for three winners. Scandy Work Kristen, who is just such a lovely girl, and she's just back from Peru, where 
um, she posted some fantastic pictures of the spinning and knitting and color that is happening down there in Peru. Um, so follow her at Scandi Work on Instagram. And she's offering three sweater patterns from her Ravelry store. Diana Waller is generously offering a copy of her new ebook, Fog and Frost. And she is Cakes and Vikings or Cake and Vikings on Instagram. Helen Magnuson from Iceland is offering three of her sweater patterns for three lucky winners. Bristol Ivy is offering a pattern prize from her one of her collections, and you can link on that through the Ravelry group. Lovely Melody Mandarines is offering two patterns from her Ravelry store. Susan Crawford is offering three patterns, the Boland, the Wartime Farm Sleeveless Pullover. I'd love to knit that. And Diamonds Are Forever from her Ravelry store. And Mary Jane Mucklestone is offering the Stopover, the Volvest and Sigla to three lucky winners. So keep on knitting and chatting and work our way to the end of the cal, which is sometime near the end of October. We've got loads of time yet. Don't procrastinate. Keep knitting. But we do have lots of time. And thank you so much to these wonderful designers who signed up to offer prizes. I appreciate it. And remember to use hashtag TWT sweater cal 2018 in your Instagram posts. It's great to see you on Instagram and I am keeping up with people there. Okay, let's move on. Newsletter. The Willie Thistle has never really done a newsletter. And so in August, I sent out the first proper newsletter and I called it the Blether Letter. Hopefully many of you got it. There was info about the podcast changes that I talked about here, as well as yarn news from the shop. Uh, There was also a discount code in there that many of you took advantage of and which I'm really happy to offer you. I was also able to offer some first comers Jameson and Smith color cards, which are so hard to get. So be a subscriber to the Willie Thistle newsletter because I do have a few more of those coming and I will tell you how you can get yours, if you're lucky enough, in the newsletter. So to subscribe to the newsletter, just add your email address in the little box at the bottom of the page, any of the pages in the shop. Just put your email address in there and you will be subscribed. That's it. Then you'll receive regular newsletters with insider news and goings on here. And there will be from time to time discounts not offered elsewhere. So it's worth your while subscribing. And it's a lovely way actually for me to just slow down and find out what I want to tell you in a way that's much more relaxed than me shooting off all this in a podcast, which is much more animated and fun to do and I enjoy it but I think the newsletter can be more thoughtful and thoughtfully thought out (laughs) so listen to the podcast sign up for the newsletter and between those two things as well as Instagram and visiting the shop you will know everything you need to know in terms of discounts special offers things you can't get normally such as the Jameson and Smith color cards and anything else that I happen to um, be able to offer you Blacker Yarns is celebrating its 13th birthday this month with a new yarn tour and there's much excitement as there is every year at this time for this yarn to be released. It's an Aran weight yarn and I'm saying that's a UK Aran weight because I think for yardage it's more a US worsted weight yarn. It has 219 yards per 100 grams. However, I think it could be classified heavier than a worsted weight because it seems bulkier than a true worsted. So even with a worsted yardage the gauge is 18 stitches and 28 rows for four inches on a us8 so i think it's a lovely plump yarn it is wool and spun and it comes in five beautifully dyed shades as well as one light to mid gray natural color the yarn itself contains from devon flocks that specialize in crossbreeding to produce the finest fibers 55 percent romney cross from the south of devon 28 percent of the softest merino cross from the north of devon five percent north ronald sea and four percent shetland both to enhance the woolly character of the yarn and of course those are very scottish breeds and eight percent british alpaca for color and softness This goes on sale September 9th. I have my stock here and I'm ready to go at a time to be determined. I'm not sure what time is best for shoppers. I'm on the East Coast, 
Many of you are on the West Coast or somewhere in between. And I'm really always uh, challenged to find a good time to start the bidding. So if you have any strong opinions about that, let me know and I'll take them into account. Otherwise, you will find out the time via Instagram and I will possibly send out a special newsletter just about the updates so that you all know when to have your fingers ready. I have the maximum stock I was allowed to have. This is a very limited yarn as it always is for their birthday yarns, but this is even more limited than the brushwork they had last year. Not to say you won't get some. I have a nice number of skeins. I have a good selection. I've got all the colors and I've got more of the natural gray than I do of the colors. So keep that in mind. But yes, it is a limited edition yarn and once it's gone, it won't be made again. So if you're on the fence and you're not sure and you feel like you would be sad if you missed out, then definitely plan ahead and be there as soon as it goes live. Vintage Shetland Project News. The Vintage Shetland book by Susan Crawford. There was a slight delay right at the end of production of the second printing of these lovely books, which has pushed their arrival to me back a bit, unfortunately. So if you are wanting one, you can be amongst the first to know just by clicking on the green notify me tab in the Vintage Shetland Project page of the shop. That was a mouthful. So if you go to the shop, find Vintage Shetland Project, click on that, you will see a green notify me button. Click on that, put your email address in and you will be the first to know when it is in the shop. Because as soon as it goes in the shop, all those emails go out automatically. It's a lovely service that I really enjoy. Because before I had that, I was keeping massive lists on bits of paper that would inevitably get misplaced. (laughs) This is a much more organized and reliable method. So definitely, if you want a copy of the book, go ahead and click the notify me button in the shop. Uh, Many of you have already signed up for your email notifying you of its arrival. Uh, And like I said, that's the best way to ensure you're notified right away without delay. So I am hoping for it to come in the next few weeks. You know, we are getting there and thank you for bearing with me. As you know, I'm also the distributor for North America. And so I'm looking for local yarn shops who would like to stock the book. Tell your LYS to get in touch with me about stocking the book. It's marvellous to see works in progress and finished objects starting to appear from the Vintage Shetland Project book. Lovely, Laurie times five is knitting the Vela cardigan, which is modelled by Ella Gordon in the book, with Susan's Fenella yarn. It's just beautiful. And go check out Laurie's Instagram feed for pictures of it. And of course, I have the full complement of Fenella and Exelana in stock for you. So more news to follow on the Vintage Shetland Project. So I have an announcement. Marie Wallen has been working on a new book that will be similar in shape and size to the immensely popular Shetland book. This book features Marie Wallen's patterns in her own yarn. She has a brand new yarn in her name and it's called British Breeds Yarn. I've seen photos of it and it looks fantastic. And the book goes with the yarn. I'm very excited about this book coming. I can't wait to get my hands on it and it will be coming soon and I will share more about it with you over time. But keep your eyes peeled for more Wildwood news and Marie Wallen's new yarn aptly called British Breeds and that will only be available in a few US stores of which the Woolly Thistle is definitely one. The Woolly Thistle will be stocking both and also will be the North American distributor for the book Wildwood. So again, I'll be offering this book to retailers at wholesale. So let your local yarn stores know that you would like this in stock. Okay, now it's time for the Woolly Thistle update. As always, thank you so much. The Woolly Thistle is doing great and I really appreciate you shopping with me and telling your friends about the shop as well as sharing on Instagram when your orders arrive. This all helps immensely to get the word out and helps me grow and continue to offer the best yarns in the world. <laughs> the Woolly Thistle will be vending at Squam Art Fair in New Hampshire Saturday 9.15 and I hope to see you there. 
New items that are finding their home at the Woolly Thistle. Okay, coming uh, very shortly, and it might be in the shop by the time this podcast goes live. Old Centrum Worsted White. It's a three-ply yarn, so it's great for cables. I have several shades. This yarn is made in Sweden from Swedish sheep and it's gorgeous it's gorgeous and I can't wait to get knitting with it myself also coming um, are project bags from Wild and Woodsy her signature big metal zipper on there and there's two prints to choose from one black watch esque type a green and black or dark blue and the other is a red and black check so I'm hoping that those will be just going in the shop as this episode goes out so look out for those. Retrosaria, Mondum sock yarn is doing very well and so there's more coming. Brusca is also coming in DK weight. This is 100% Portuguese wool over dyed. And actually this is the yarn that is used in uh, Rosa Pomar's design for Len 6. So this is a DK weight, very natural woolly wool. The sweater that she knit for this and designed for the yarn is the one with the bobbles all over it. It's really cute. So we'll have that in stock. And then I also have Bucos, which is hand spun by women in Minho, Portugal. This is a very, very rustic yarn that is spun using a dye staff. So I have four different variations on that. Now that yarn is interesting. It doesn't come in uniform weights. So you get to choose how much of it you want. And it goes from, I think, 110 to 120 grams to 130 to 140. So you get to pick how much you want and it'll be priced accordingly. Blacker Tamar four ply is slowly being rolled out from Blacker Yarns and I'll have enough of that soon enough to put in the shop. I've been stockpiling it till I had enough to offer you and I'm waiting for DK to come. So as soon as I have enough, I'll put it in the shop. But I have a few shades of the four ply, so I'm going to put that in. And can I just say... We have missed Blacker Tamar, haven't we? I know a lot of you email me about it and it's a lovely, lovely yarn. It looks fantastic. The colours this year, they're the same shades, but they are soft. They just seem a little softer than before. Very, very beautiful. So I know I'll be stealing a sweater quantity's worth for myself because I need to knit something with that. Um, so I'll be putting that in the shop if it's not in there already. Uh, we're going to have Jameson Spindrift Scalloway Tam Kits. Uh, this is one of the hats that Marie Wallen designed for her book Shetland, which uses Jameson Spindrift yarn. So that will be in the shop. I'm getting more Little Grey Sheep Hampshire DK because that is gorgeous stuff too. And I'm also going to be stocking their four ply come the fall. So that's exciting. I'm really, I'm really chuffed about that. Highlights currently in stock. Well, we've got the Mondum Sock Yarn, which is 100% Portuguese wool from Heritage Breeds. And it's got such a great hand to it. It's all natural, no nylon, no super washing or anything like that. And it's got this really meaty hand to it. I really like it. Einram from Iceland. This is the fingering white Icelandic wool with um, some silk wrapped around it, Thai silk, and it's beautiful. I knitted my... What's it called? Can't remember. From Lina 4, Camilla Vad designed it. I knitted my sweater and it had the lovely lace around the waist. You know what I'm talking about. I knitted that in Einram. So I've ordered more and there should be more colours in the shop by the time this podcast is out to you. It's a lovely yarn. It's really, really quite nice. And I want to knit more with it as well myself. Tuku is in good supply right now, both fingering and the sock yarn. Both fingering and sock yarn, I think, feature in the new line of six magazine. So that's good. Rauma is in good supply with a shipment just in. And I'm adding more shades all the time and I'm growing the Strick Garn, which is the DK weight as well. Colour cards for both lines are available. It's the same wool in both lines. It's just one's a four ply and one's a DK weight. And I'm very happy to add colours that you would like, but maybe I don't have. Just let me know. Send me an email and I will order them for the shop as well as you. So I'm growing the strict garn and I'm still adding to the fennel garn as well. This yarn is fantastic. I really like it. And people seem to really like it too. It is selling well and I think it's just so versatile from garments to mittens to socks. And it's got that lovely 
crispy, crunchy feel when you're knitting with it, which is like Shetland wool, but it's a bit more meaty because it's a thicker gauge. And then, of course, it blooms up beautifully. And I really do want to finish that pie shawl I started at Squam, which I'm using the DK weight for, the strict garn, because it's going to be gorgeous. All right, what else? Let's see. Fran Japani is doing really well. I feel like there's a whole new bunch of uh, Gansey knitters out there. And I just got Dark Navy in, which is new to the shop. So there's Navy and now there's Dark Navy as well. And there is a slight difference. The Dark Navy is much more inky dark color. So if that's what you want, that's what you want to go for. Whereas the Navy is not so dark. Susan Crawford's Vanilla and Exelana are in good supply. Let Lopi and Pluto Lopi are in good supply. And I actually have a box. No, I have, what am I saying? I have three boxes to go in. So you should be good with that. Jameson and Smith is in great supply too. I've just put a whole bunch of cones in the shop. So hopefully some of them are there for you if that interests you when this goes out. But I have all the shades in stock. So that's in good supply. John Arbin loft kits are being well received and doing well. And so I keep making more up for you. So if you're interested, this is a great way to test out some John Arbin DK. That's his knit by numbers. It's 100% merino. It's non-superwash, organic merino, spun by John Arbin Textiles down there in Devon in England. And it's a lovely, bouncy, squishy, worsted spun, soft merino yarn. Yum, yum. And so many colors. It's ridiculous. And then let's see what else do we have. I think that's it for for what's happening in the shop. Let's talk about books and magazines. I've referred to Lina 6. This is set in Iceland this time and I'll be taking pre-orders or I will have been taking pre-orders by the time you hear this as of September 1. So make sure you get your pre-order in. I believe it's a 926 launch date or 928, but I'll have that all in the shop for you so you know when to expect it. As always, if you want to buy something else and include Lina 6 with your order, I'll just ship it all out when the magazine comes. If you want something sooner, then you need to have two separate orders. But I'm happy to hold on to things until the magazine comes out and then just ship it all out at once. It makes for a very fun weekend here. Nice thing is, though, my daughter is now old enough to really be a good help. So she gets dragged in and uh, she just got a cell phone. So now she works in the shop a couple hours every week to pay for her cell phone. (laughs) She is actually really good. She pays good attention to detail. So I'm glad to have her in helping. Making uh, Black and White releases in September and we'll have that in stock. By Hand 7, focusing on British Columbia's southern region is coming soon. And Marie Wallen's Bloomsbury is back in stock along with North Sea and Shetland with Wildwood coming soon. And of course, Kate Davies's book Handy Woman is now in stock and has been, of course, very well received. So I'll try and keep that in stock for you. Kits, the Piri Fleur kits by Kate Davies in Jameson and Smith. More kits will be back in stock. We're just waiting for those lovely flowery stitch markers to come in. Uh, so those are lovely. The Scalloway Tam Jameson Spindrift kit is coming if it's not in already. Feral cap kits will be back in stock soon. And of course, don't forget, I have Erica Knight's cotton baby knit, knit kits, which are a really handy little thing to have on hand for when somebody wants to pop out a baby. <laughs> you can just pop out a little two-piece knitted suit that's really trendy and cute and lovely. So I have those. Oh my goodness, is that enough? I think that's enough of me blethering. I think now we're going to take ourselves off up to the coop for a coop cast and I'll see you on the other side where we'll wrap things up. Hi ladies. How we doing? Huh? I got snacks for you. Hello. Can I come over? Watch out. Hi there, Stuffy. Okay. Who wants some? A big thing of lettuce. Big thing of lettuce for you girls. Some chips, some cucumbers.
grabbing their bits and running off to eat it by themselves because things get stolen from each other otherwise. Peep, peep. Peep, 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 peep. Yeah, so we've got 12 girls now. <laughs> it's funny to watch them running off. Hello. 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 Oh, thank you. Hi. You're very pretty. This is the barred rock that I'm petting, and she is black and white stripes, but looks more speckly. Mm. Hi, honey. We got two of them. Hello. Can I get your picture? Let me get your picture. So yes, thank you, dear listeners and customers for making the Woolly Thistle a viable business that is employing me full time. I work for yarn, not money yet. <laughs> and my two trusty customer care associates, Maggie and Susie, both ladies help me with packing your orders throughout the week. And they care about yarn and knitting as much as you or me. And I love having them here. They're really great people. So please keep in touch with us through the Ravelry group. The best way to reach me for urgent yarn matters is always by email, which is hello at thewoollythistle.com. So I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to New Hampshire Knits. You can find the Ravelry Group at NH Knits. You can find me on Ravelry as NHK Claire, on Instagram, NH underscore Knits, and you can email me at nhknits001 at gmail.com. And you can find the Woolly Thistle all over the internet at the Woolly Thistle with two L's in Woolly. Woolly.